This is Frank from Apple One to One. Today we're going to continue on our exploration of the format function within numbers. We're going to go over two tabs within the format function, the text and the arrange. We've already covered the table and the cell tabs. If you haven't seen our explanation of those tabs within the format function, the links to those videos will be provided in the description below. I have the same spreadsheet that I used in those previous videos, so we're going to start with that. Now, the text tab is very similar to it's actually it's identical to what you would find in pages and it has to do more with the style and the different formatting that you can do for text rather than the numerics in your spreadsheet so if i click on this heading here you'll see see if i click on a cell this is the default for the text and you can see bold italicized on the line, the font, all of that. If I click on the heading, then it switches to the de table default. Now, if you click on the down arrow, you can pick any of these other styles that, that, that you like uh, or that you want to customize your spreadsheet for. But it's basically for the formatting of the text. So if you click on it, there you are. Now, and we're on the layout. So if you click Style, it's going to come back to here, and you can change the text that you want in that style, but you're still going to use the title layout format. And essentially, that's what it does. And no matter where you go, whether you're in a cell or in the top of the spreadsheet, you can go and select the font that you like, and it, it'll replace that font. You can do a bold, italicized, underline. Now, if the font you select is already a, an italicized of sorts, it, it will not, you won't see any significant difference. Underline, strike through, that would be used if you were doing some sort of editing. Then you have wide or thin is your selection. And then over here you have your point size. You can increase it. Text color, click in here, and you can use granulate fill. This is for the actual word. You can angle it. This is going to be your left justify, center, right justify, and proportional. Now, again, proportional will be used mostly if you're uh, putting a photo or something. And I use it more in pages than I do in numbers. Yeah, top of line, middle of the line bottom of the line. This is all how you want to set it. You can wrap the text in the cell. This is your spacing between lines. Okay, point size. And that's essentially what that does for you. If you go to layout, then you have some other options here. And this deals, again, mainly with, you know, how you want your text to appear. The text in inset is the four point. If you increase it, you see how it moved. So you can play with all that to accommodate whatever needs you have in your spreadsheet. These are different indentures. Now, again, indents, I, I normally use them just in pages, not in a uh, spreadsheet. So if you find a need for them, this is where you would use them. The same with tabs. Um, borders. Now, borders you may want to use. So I have this cell, C2, highlighted. So if I go to borders, I can select a border. Um, I could do all around. So it's going to put that border 
all around the text, not necessarily the cell. And I can then change the color, and that is going to change the color of the border. Now, you can also change the color. This is called the paragraph background. You can change the color of the paragraph background. So uh, let's make it uh, uh, there. So you have your orange border with a purple background with black lettering. Again, it's, it's cosmetic to your spreadsheet. The most important content in your, is your, in your spreadsheet are your numbers. All of this other stuff is just to dress it up. All right. That pretty much covers the text. Let's go to arrange. So arrange, if you add a picture, let's see, I have it. I don't have a picture on this invoice. So on this, let's add a photo. So we go to media and we go to photos and let's say I add this photo right here. Okay. Now you size it, just drag it to whatever. You see that it is on top of the spreadsheet. So what this area will do here is if you hit back, it's going to put that photo behind the spreadsheet. And because of the different coloration that I'm using in the alternate rows, you'll see that take precedent over the photo. You can move it to front. You can move it backward, forward. You can, these are all different positions. Okay. You can align it left or right of your spreadsheet, however you choose to do it. So you see over here, I don't have the alternating color. So this portion of the photo shows through and your numbers are on top of it, but you see the photo. You can also go to position. You can, this is where you can adjust your size. You can go back to your original size. You can change the position of the X axis. Okay, the Y axis. So you can position it this way over here, anywhere uh, you like in your spreadsheet. The rotation, that's pretty cool. You can use this little rotating button just by sliding it and it'll rotate the photo. Again, this is something I use more in pages than I do in numbers, but it's here. And the nice thing about this, I keep saying is pages and numbers, is that once you learn what this does in one program, such as pages or numbers, it does the exact same thing in the other program. So once you learn its functionality, you can apply it without any learning curve to the other software package. You can flip it. You can flip it this way. You can again angle it however you'd like. You could lock it so that's that's where it stays. And unlock it. If you go now, you see you have a range and you have image. If you go to image and you're clicked on the photo, you can you go to exposure, you can go to saturation. So you can change. You see how that's changing? So you can customize this any any really any way you you like Ex the, your exposure so you you know you can play with that um you can go to style once the photo is clicked okay now here you can put a frame around it see how i put the frame around it you have a border you have a shadow so you can enhance the shadow see how it's going on the top you can use a drop shadow you can use a contact shadow. See how that is down at the bottom here? Curved shadow. You see how that gives you a different look here? If you wanted to put this picture as a background for an invoice, um, you could do that. 
This is the opacity for the photo. And you see how now if I go over to arrange and I put that in behind the spreadsheet, you can see the photo. Hopefully that was helpful and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast.